What's under that tarp is the most fantastic soil compost pile that you'll ever see in your life. This is no joke, people. This has been four years of development, working with the Andersons, working with a whole bunch of agricultural PhD people, working with their laboratories, and several stages of development to come up with a final product that's called Dirt Booster Plus. That is the final product that's now all in one. This product, what's sitting under that tarp that I'm about to show you, and I'll walk you through this process. When we sent this stuff off to Clemson University for testing, once we let it cool down and we sent it off, everything was off the charts. I mean, literally pinned to the point that says there's excessive amount of nutrients. There's so much organic matter. So this is what we're gonna to create today. I'm gonna to show you how to create that, how to use Dirt Booster. And I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna to talk to you, I'm gonna walk you through what the product is, how it was developed, and the three or four different ways that we can actually use this. And we'll even talk about um, some LPGA courses that have actually tested this on lawns, on their fairways and helped their fairways and stuff. So a lot of stuff to cover today, but hold on. Let me say this very clearly. You will never use another fertilizer inside your vegetable or flower garden once you do this method. Never again. This has been four years of development of this product. Absolutely off the charts. It's 100% all natural. What's inside of this is corn distillates, um, biochar, humic acid, molasses particles, and then mycorrhizal fungi spores and good bacteria spores. That's all inside of this. And I'll talk about that more in depth. And I'm gonna talk about the life cycle that creates what happens. How does adding organic matter and adding this stuff and especially mycorrhizal fungi, how does all that work? So for years, this has been almost four years in development. This has been a gradual stage year after year where what we started to do is we started to listen to people like Gabe Brown, regenerative farming, no-till farming, and we took in everything. We took in biochar, information from studies from biochar, organic matters. And we really spent a lot of time developing that. And if you guys follow my channel, you understand we've, we've progressed this. We used to use some chicken feed. We used to use those uh, green hay pellets. We used to, we tested all kinds of different stuff, soybeans. And then we found the, and then we found the corn distillate product. And there's a reason why we use that. Dirt Booster Plus has the corn distillates in it, which is that super fine, super fine flaky, uh, extremely high nutrient rich corn material. It has molasses particles and molasses particles are some kind of grain soaked in molasses. It's not an actual molasses particle. Then you have uh, biochar, you have humic acid, uh, you have mycorrhizal fungi spores, and you have good bacteria spores inside of this, all inside one. So this, when Dirt Booster finally was developed, the first uh, Dirt Booster original one version, you had to, it came with a packet that contained the mycorrhizal fungi and the bacteria. And you had to mix it into your black cow compost or into your soil, mix that up in water. So it was a two-step process. We went to the Andersons, really smart people up there. They have a bunch of PhD ag people. And we went to their laboratory and we said, look, can you make this an all-in-one? And so they worked on it and worked on it for months and they finally came up with the formula. So that's now Dirt Booster Plus. So Dirt Booster Plus is now the only thing that's being sold out there, and it contains everything. It's all in one. You don't need anything else to do this. It has all the mycorrhizal fungi spores. It has all the good bacteria spores. It has everything inside of it. So real quickly, let me explain why this is so effective and just the cycle that goes on. Roots in the ground are absolutely critical, but when you have roots in the ground, those roots send out signals in the form of sugars and proteins. And what is that? what happens then? Mycorrhizal fungi actually comes in as attracted to the roots and soil microbes are attracted. The mycorrhizal fungi, which is one of the key elements to good gardening, here's your root system. The mycorrhizal fungi actually wraps around those roots and it grows and it extends. And what it does, is it creates a large network, sometimes three, four times the size of your roots. Well, your roots are, de are delivering sugars and proteins to your mycorrhizal fungi and in return, the mycorrhizal fungi are returning nutrients and water to your plant. So instead of having this root ball, now you have an extended mycorrhizal uh, root zone. Nutrients don't move well through water. And that's where that mycorrhizal fungi, the mycorrhizal fungi will actually go out and find those nutrients. So you have the mycorrhizal fungi, good bacteria move in, 
And then you have larger uh, protozoa, you have all kinds of larger little microbes that come in and start eating those microbes. And the waste that those things produce are actually the nutrients in the form that the plant can uptake. So it's this life cycle, and that's what happens when you're using organic matter or manure. That's how it works. And that's why Dirt Booster is specifically formulated for that. Number one, the organic matter that we use is so fine, it can be digested by all those things almost immediately. It's not in a hard form that takes days and weeks and months to break down. It's very, very clean, but it's 100% all natural. There's nothing you could, literally, if you wanted to, you could probably eat this stuff. Well, except for the bacteria, I don't know. <laughs> but it's just all natural. There's nothing bad inside this. And a lot of people think that there's nutrients in this, and there's not. The nutrients come from that life cycle process. And that's the same thing. Um, we haven't used fertilizers in our gardens, in our vegetable gardens, in our flower gardens, for four years now, and we have almost doubled the growth and crop output by using this. So when we, let me tell you about the different ways to use this. I'm gonna focus first on the pile that we're talking about. We take black cow compost that we buy from Lowe's or Home Depot. And for one bag of black cow compost, I usually put about a third of a bag of dirt booster on it. I mix it up, um, I wet it, make sure it's moist, not wet, just moist. And then I pour that hot water down the center and then I cover it up and then the pile heats up. And you wanna turn that pile so that the outside undigested organic matter sort of gets back into the middle. Same thing, pile it back up. You can put another hot water down the middle if it's cold out. We have taken that material once it's cooled down and we have sent it off to Clemson University. And the tests that have came back, number one, extremely high in organic matter. CECs, which is your cation exchange capacity, extremely high. It was somewhere around a 23, I think it was, on the CECs. Uh, nutrients were off the chart. Matter of fact, it was pinned all the way over and it said excessive. That means the nutrient level were just high. You take that and then what you do is you mix that into your garden soil or you mix a small amount in where you're gonna plant a plant. You plant your plant and that's it, you're done. You won't have to use any fertilizers for the rest of the season. So that's the way you do it, number one. Number two is not to make a pile, but just take Dirt Booster and just mix it into your garden soil. Just mix it in. While you're up there, just sort of mix it in, especially if you have um, raised beds. Just wherever you're gonna plant, just mix in the Dirt Booster. We pour it in and pour it in. And now you're adding biochar, organic matter, good uh, spores. And those spores will stay there for a long time. And as the plants start to grow and send out those signals, that mycorrhizal fungi will start to develop, the good back robes, the whole life cycle will start. So you can dig it right in. Top dressing, what you can do is if you have established plants, now we just planted some rows of Sharon's around the pond berm on the back side of the pond berm because they won't get big and the root systems are small. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this pile that I just made and we put mulch around them. I'm gonna pull back that mulch and I'm gonna take that really rich soil and I'm just gonna put a top dressing on it and then I'm gonna push the, push the mulch back. So those for a garden, for flower gardens or vegetable gardens, those are the three ways you can use it. I can't stress enough how much testing and how much development and how long, it's been almost four years from concept up till testing to Anderson's lab people and researchers actually doing all this to create probably the best product that's all natural in the market. Do not use fertilizers. You don't have to use fertilizers. I know if you have a Facebook account or whatever, or Instagram, you're gonna be pounded with Joe's Miracle Fertilizer. We got dead fish and everything else inside of it. Uh, we got seaweed and dead fish and you put it on your plants. Don't do it. Don't worry, you don't need any fertilizers. You don't need synthetics. You don't need anything kind of natural stuff. Just use this compost pile, super compost pile, that you can make literally in two to three days and just use it in your gardens. A little bit jumpy, let me explain what I'm doing. I am making one of these super compost piles. I, what I have learned to do is I have learned to put out a tarp, spread out my black cow compost manure, which I get at Lowe's or Home Depot, spread it out, put it in the sunshine, and let it warm up. Here's one of the issues that we always you always have with this, especially in the cooler temperatures when you're in, you know, you get down to the 40s and 50s at night or even the 30s, is getting this pile to activate. I want you to think about this pile as a pile of wood. And if you don't get an ember going inside of this pile of wood and you cover it up, it's just gonna sit there. You have to get something to start this little fire going. 
So what I've learned, and through the, and this was a great example, I thought I had plenty of warm temperature with this sunshine. But I went ahead and I laid my black cow compost, I put it out in the sun, then I put my dirt booster on top, then I spray it with water, I mix it all up, I put it into a pile and I cover it over with, tar uh, cover it over with the tarp. I figured that was plenty warm enough. I came out the next day and guess what? It really didn't activate. So what I've learned, and I did this last year. Now, last year I used boiling water and I don't recommend that. I actually, this year, I just got hot tap water and then I popped a bottle, uh, just a regular water bottle into the microwave, brought the temperature up a little bit, poked a hole on top and poured that hot water right down the center, covered it over with the tarp again and it fired right up. So you have to remember, you have to get that temperature up. Mycorrhizal fungi and, and, and microbes are not active until they're constantly at that 75, 80 degrees. Now we talk about this a lot when we talk about not to use organics on your lawn early in the season because the cold temperatures just don't, they won't propagate that mycorrhizal fungi and the good bacteria and soil microbes. So again, I put out my black cow compost on the tarp, I let it heat up, I thought I was doing everything right, I wet it with a hose, I mix it all up, it just didn't get warm enough. So a little trick is once you do that, make that little volcano pile, just poke a little hole in the top and get some really hot water. I hate to say boiling water because I don't want someone to spill a pot of boiling water on someone carrying it out, but you can use boiling water. So I just take a water bottle, get hot tap water, I put it in the microwave for another minute until it's really, really hot, and I pour it right down the center and then start it. Now that starts that little activation and all that activity starts. And once it starts, all you have to do is just every day just go out there and just turn the pile turn the pile cover it back up and within two or three days you're going to have this pile and what's going to happen to that pile all of that organic matter those distillates and, and molasses particles they're going to turn white you're going to see steam coming out of the top of it it's a really cool process but it's really kind of messed up in how i shot this video so let me try and show you these bags this is what i use i take black cow it's about 59 degrees when you buy it at the store so i've got to warm it up so what i'm going to do is i find a place that's in the sunshine i'm going to spread this out i'm going to let the sun heat it up okay so there's my manure oven <laughs> so in a few minutes the sun's going to be up directly overhead and it's going to be shining on this and probably only take uh two or three hours of sunlight on this will warm this up Again, I don't want to make it muddy. Now I'm going to cover it. I'll come back here uh, tomorrow morning and I'll take a temperature reading on this and show you. Depending on the time of year and how much of the dirt boost you put in, typically these piles will get up about 100 degrees. That's about what you'll see. You'll see it at 95, 100, 110. We have had these piles go up to 135 degrees. And what's going on? The mycorrhizal fungi, the bacteria, everything's getting active. You're starting that whole digestive process and it just creates heat. That's your super compost when it's ready. Take that, mix it in around your plants, mix it into your garden, you're all set. You will have the best garden soil in the world, period. Oh, morning, so it's uh, the next day. Let me give you a warning. And I have talked about mycorrhizal fungi and active bacteria based on soil temperature and this is why we don't use organic fertilizers when it's cold they don't work they don't break down <laughs> you need a real heavy population not only of uh microbes soil microbes but also mycorrhizal fungi so yesterday my pile failed to 
failed to um, start up, we'll call it, fire up. So I came out here with extremely hot tap water. I'm on a well, as hot as I could get it. Now I have used boiling water before, but I'm cautious about saying that because I don't want someone carrying a pot of boiling water around. And all you have to do is just go to the center of the pile, just poke a little hole, doesn't have to go all the way down, and just pour, you know, uh, two, three, four cups of hot boiling water or very, very hot tap water down the center and then cover it up. So that's what I did yesterday. Let me feel the tarp. Yesterday I came out and I feel the tarp, it was cold. And I feel a little bit of warmth. It's rainy and cool out here. Let's see what's going on. I may have to hit it again. Ooh, okay, so now it's not super active, but I want you to see something. Can you see the steam coming off there? I hope you can. I hope you can see some of the steam coming off. Let me open this up a little bit. And maybe you can see that. Now that's what I'm talking about. Now that pile is starting to be active and I'm seeing a little bit, see right there? I'm seeing a little bit of mycorrhizal fungi. So now let's take the temperature on this one. Remember it was about, oh, in the 60s. And look at that. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Steam coming out, 110, 111. Look at that, see that steam coming off there? God, that's good looking. Haven't seen that for a year. And this is what happens to a normal compost pile after months and months or weeks and weeks. This is 24 hours. All these white particles. And you can see when this starts to turn white like this, that's all that stuff being digested basically is the way to think of it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna mix this up again. Get the wind to cooperate here. Ooh, yeah. I know it's just about ready. Right. I'm going to restack this up into my little volcano pile. I'm just going to make a little hole here, not all the way down. Then I'm going to take my hot, hot water and I'm going to pour it down. And then I'm going to cover this all up. And I always put a brick in a brick because the wind will open it up. And uh, that's it. So it's already started a digestive process, but you have to keep that heat level up. So now what I'm doing is, is I'm stirring up the parts that haven't, aren't turning white, mixing it all up repiling and put more hot water down the center. It'll sit here. This thing will get up again today, probably to another 120 degrees. Woo, man. Okay, it's the next day and it is cold and rainy out here. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go back out to that farm property. I'm gonna look at that pile again, but you take this super compost and you mix it into the soil, wherever you're gonna plant a plant. Don't plant directly into this because it's so super concentrated with nutrients and everything. You want to mix this into your natural soil. How much do you mix in? I put in like a big scoop of it into an area and uh, for each one of the plants or just mix it into your garden beds. Just mix it right into your garden beds. That's just, that's the main way we've been using this. But again, we've done testing, we use it a lot. We put it right on our lawns. We put it directly on the turf. You can take the raw product and mix it into the soil. It'll Nature will take care of it on its own. But that's the way we make these super compost piles and they're so effective. The only warning I'm gonna give you is 
don't take this stuff and plant directly into it because it's so concentrated with nutrients that you may have some issues. So make sure you mix it into a natural soil as well. Hope to help. Talk to you later. Bye.